So recently, I made this video explaining a bunch of Doctor Who plot holes, and at one point in the video, I just sort of casually mentioned a headcanon that I've had for years, where basically, I think at least some of the new Who Masters come before the classic Who Masters in the Masters chronological timeline. To be honest, this is just kind of a headcanon that I've had for years, so I didn't think much of it when I mentioned it in that video, but apparently people really warmed to it, and after some discussions were had in the comments about it, I thought, you know what, let's try and piece together the Masters timeline, why not? And by the way, if you do enjoy this video, consider subscribing. At the moment, I'm mainly making sort of less scripted, less in-depth analysis kind of videos while I work on a certain pretty big video that I'm aiming to have out by the end of next month. So if you don't want to miss that when I do drop it, then make sure to subscribe right now. Right, right now. So first, let's begin by going through our perspective of the Masters timeline, all the times they've appeared for us in the show. Also, I am going to be mainly focusing on the main show itself and not so much the expanded media because I go outside. <laughs> that was a joke, I promise. Oh. The first time the Master appeared in Doctor Who was in the 1971 serial Terror of the Autons, played by Roger Delgado. This Master was easily a staple of the Third Doctor era, as he appeared multiple times while the Doctor was exiled on Earth. Originally, the Master was supposed to appear in the Third Doctor's final story, where it would be revealed that the Doctor and the Master were brothers and then the Master would sacrifice himself to save the Doctor. But unfortunately, Roger Delgado ended up dying in a car crash, so that never happened. The next time the Master appeared in the show was in the 1976 serial The Deadly Assassin. You know, as opposed to an assassin that isn't deadly. Here, it's confirmed that the Master was on his final regeneration, and was just clinging on to life. And the Master wants to use the Eye of Harmony to restart his regeneration cycle, which would also destroy Gallifrey in the process, you know, bit rude. Eventually, the Master would find a new body by stealing the body of Tremas, the father of Nyssa, companion to the Fifth Doctor, who barely has anything to say about her father's body being puppeted by the Master because Classic Who was emotionally constipated. This Tremas Master appeared multiple times throughout the rest of the Classic era. Eventually, he's sentenced to execution by the Daleks, but then he survives as a snake because why not? He then possesses another human body and tries using the Eye of Harmony again for stuff and then he falls in it. The next time we see the Master, he's escaped from the Time War, disguised himself as a human, and hid at the end of the universe, before his memories are reawakened when the Doctor, Martha, and Jack arrive. He then steals the Doctor's TARDIS, becomes Prime Minister, fucking dies. Now that man is dead, we can finally be free! But I always come back! Once he's come back, he's very hungry and also Skeletor. Man, remember when RTD took this show seriously? He really fell off, am I right? And the next time we see the Master, he's a woman now. Yeah, congrats, proud of her. She's also turned all the dead people into Cybermen. Slightly less proud of her. Missy is then sentenced to execution, but survives because she has plot armor. She then has to spend a thousand years in a vault, guarded by the Doctor. And throughout this time, she begins to change. And eventually, the Doctor believes she's changed so much, he puts her to the test. He gives her an adventure to go on, to take his place and to see how she does. But it's on this adventure, she meets her past self. In this episode, the Doctor's convinced he's not surviving this encounter. All he's doing is slightly prolonging the life of a group of innocent humans, because it's the kind thing to do. And what he said really resonates with Missy, and she decides to go and fight alongside him before being shot dead by her past self. And this is seemingly where the Master dies, except then he comes back and he's also Rasputin, and then he's about to die and then gets trapped in the Toymaker's tooth, which is then picked up by an undisclosed hand, and that is where the Master's story ends. And now, it's time for my theory. So, hypothesis. At least some of the new Who Masters come before the classic Who Masters in the Masters timeline. Now, there is evidence both for and against this theory, so let's go through some of that first. First, the most important one in my opinion, why don't the classic Who Masters have a drumbeat in their head? It's confirmed by the Time Lords that they planted the drumbeat in the Master's head when he's dead into the untempered schism, so the Master has had it all his life. Yet, for some reason, the classic Who Masters didn't have it. There is never a mention of a drumbeat in the Master's head in classic Who. So, how would that make sense? Then in the end of time, the Master is sent back to Gallifrey with the rest of the Time Lords, and at some point they cure the drumbeat in his head. And then after this, he ends up on the Mondasian colony ship. Now one thing about this Master in the series 10 finale compared to his previous appearances is he's a lot less insane and a lot more sly and cunning, resembling his classic Who self a lot more. And isn't it funny how this shift in character only happened as soon as the drumbeat was cured? Also, maybe I'm looking way too much into this, but the Master's clothes in The Doctor Falls are quite similar to the Master's clothes in Terror of the Autons. But yeah, honestly, the Saxon Master in Series 10 
seems like the perfect bridge between the new Who Masters with their insanity and stuff, and the classic Who Masters who are more sly and cunning. And if this is the case, what we've essentially seen is the Masters character development out of order. But it wouldn't be the first time this has happened in the show. Like, look at River Song. Like, the first time we see her in the library two-parter, she's old, she's wise. But at the beginning of her timeline, in Let's Kill Hitler, she's immature, violent, and just overall far from the person she'll become at the end of her timeline. Okay. Now for the stuff that could potentially disprove this argument. In Last of the Time Lords, the Master mentions the Sea Devils and Axons, which were both monsters he encountered alongside the Third Doctor. So how would he know about these events if they haven't happened yet to him? But honestly, it's not impossible that the Master might have just looked at all the unit files on the Doctor. Like, the Master is definitely chaotic enough to look at his own future. That's the kind of thing he'd do. Also, as this person mentioned here in the comments of my previous video, both the Crispy Master and Dewan's Master broke into the Matrix and that could have easily given them loads of information about their future selves. But yeah, as for the Dewan Master, there's a certain event in Power of the Doctor that makes it very unlikely that he comes before the Classic Masters, and that's the fact that he knows about Tegan and Ace, and knows about what happened to them. Tegan Joe Funker. As your auntie Vanessa, do you keep her in a little doll's house? And Ace! Can the Doctor ditch you? Once again, not impossible for him to know about this stuff due to him accessing the Matrix, but yeah, it does make it kind of unlikely that the Dewan Master specifically is pre-Classic Who. But yeah, Personally, I think Dewan's Master works better as a post-classic Master in this hypothetical timeline. At this point, the Master's been dying over and over again, and he grows jealous of the Doctor. He wants to be like the Doctor, and he ends up becoming the Doctor. Now, obviously, we don't currently know what's next for the Master after the tooth was picked up, but let's just say this streak of jealousy continues into the next incarnation, and then eventually, it culminates with Missy, who takes a different approach, wanting the Doctor to be like her, before eventually, the tables turn, and she ends up being more like him. And then at the end, she dies, finally deciding to stand with the Doctor after all those years. No matter what, I think Missy is just the perfect ending for the Master, so Missy is at the end of the timeline, let's go with that. Okay, so that's basically it, let's piece the timeline together. Just to be clear, there will be gaps in this timeline, where there will be potential Masters that could have fitted in. Feel free to do that with any expanded media masters if you want. So the master exists, and at some point, they die. He's then resurrected to fight in the time war, hides at the end of the universe, disguises himself as a human, gets reawoken, becomes prime minister, dies, becomes Skeletor, and gets sent back to Gallifrey. At this point, the drumbeat he had all his life has been cured, and he gets kicked out. Mutually, apparently, and ends up on the Mondasian colony ship, where he shoots his future self. He then uses his last regeneration and turns into the Delgado Master. All those adventures continue as normal, the Master ends up clinging onto life, steals a body, keeps dying over and over and over, and eventually we get the Dewan Master, and at this point he's just completely back to being insane. We know the Dewan Master is post-Sim, because he recognised the whole Four Nox thing in Spyfall. Eventually the Master steals the Doctor's body, is about to die, gets sealed inside the Toymaker's tooth, then there are some Master the shenanigans that haven't happened yet, and eventually it all culminates with Missy. So yeah, that's my theory that I've managed to piece together. If you have any corrections or any extra info you'd like to add, please let me know, because this has been really interesting to think about. And yeah, thanks for watching. See ya.